what's up, guys? This is Zach Selwyn, lead singer of Zachariah and the Lobos Riders and Country Linen. You are listening and watching the All Over the Place podcast where the fun sanity never ends. You know what it is, y'all. Hello and welcome back to All Over the Place, the official podcast of Media Pub Live. I'm your host, Eric Prevosnik. And once again, you're seeing three of us here on the screen to start out the show. Christine with us, but much like Marty did last week, with some pre-recorded segments. She had a previous engagement tonight. So she will be with us as we go around the horn like we did last week. And uh, we'll, we'll insert her answers later. So, Jim, how you doing tonight? I am scrum trulescent, sir. How are you? Super califragic and all that goes with that. You have five points if you get that reference. Moral, or, you know, I think uh, D- Dizzy probably owns the rights to that now. I'm the Fox movie, I'm sure. So, uh yeah, yeah, they just no they just seized that. our show and all the rights to it, and I well, much it. like you did last week, we need the publicity. Come on, <laughs> so uh, and Marty back in the house. Hello, Martin. How are you, my friend? Cheers. Hey, Polar hey. Pop. I'm feeling like our old boss, Marty, with with uh, the unsinkable Abby Brown. The unsinkable Abby Brown. I'm, I I've got, I got a Polar Pop attached to the hip half the time these days. It's not good. But oh, so tasty. So, but uh, this week, we've got another three for coming at you. And this one, uh, inspired by one of the many music uh, pages that I'm on, on Facebook, or maybe it was Twitter slash X. I don't know. But this week, it's going to be a uh, combining two of my favorite things, baseball and music. It's kind of, we're doing a hot stove tonight. And I, I purposely wore my Oscar Gamble jersey. Not just an amazing fro, Oscar Gamble, but... He was one of the uh, early uh, practitioners, for lack of a better word, of free agency. And uh, I, th- I believe it was eight teams he played for uh, throughout his career, if I remember correctly. But what we're going to be doing tonight on the three for Music Minded Hot Stove. So we're going to be doing three instances, cases, where we either uh, work some trades or we pick up some free agent acquisitions to make some of our favorite bands better. And then the plus one will be one time where a, a band member's departure really bummed us out, and I, and uh, as far as we're concerned, uh, just hurt the band. And uh, they, they, there was maybe some coming back, but they were never, never the same without that one member. So, Marty, you were you were an insert last week, an amazing insert last week. I, I, I loved it, and I uh, loved what, <laughs> what, what we all brought to the show last week. And uh, through the magic of editing. But this week, you're here. You're live. We're going to kick things off with you. All right. All right. Yeah, that was very interesting. uh, Interacting with people who I had no idea what they were saying or what they had said, I guess, previously. It was Uh, was odd. Happens to me all the time. (laughs) What would be the past tense of winged it? Winged it? Wung it. Wang it. I wung it. You wanged it and doodled it. (laughs) All right. So, uh. Uh, my first one um, uh, is not necessarily that I thought this guy should go, except at some point this guy needed to go. Um, <laughs> it, he was the bane of the whole problem, and uh, he was everything wrong with a really, really great band. And I'm speaking of the late, he's not dead, great Axl Rose. Mm. Out. He became a liability, uh, probably not to the extent of Vince Neil, but still, he just became a problem. And you know who would have been fantastic? Just jerk him out of there and drop in a guy from a little band called Pantera. Phil Inselmo, Inselmo in Guns N' Roses in lieu of a really great front man, Axel. Once he got douchey, man, it was time. Throw Phil in there. Let him rip it up. It would have been fantastic. It would have added a little more grit, so to speak. Oh, would have been great. I would have loved to have seen it. Uh, they could have even done some Pantera tunes. That would have been kind of fun. I was going to say, at the cost of leaving Pantera when they were just starting to really get their, their notoriety in? Well, I think uh, Axel didn't get douchey till long after Dime was dead. So, you know. Because once see, a Dime lot, went, a lot it would was say like, that he was douchey when he was causing all those uh, tardy problems and setting riots in uh, St. Louis. So maybe on that tour with Guns, I mean uh, the Guns N' Roses Metallica tour would have been the time for him to the guys to say, uh, "Hey, oh, you know what? Uh, I was out. 
I was thinking more of the time where he was like, mm, it's my band and we're going to do After it. After he dismissed everybody. Gotcha. That kind of thing. Like, you guys are all fired. I'm like, what? what are you talking about? I thought we were in this together. Yeah, but you're fired. Well, he yeah, just, I, 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 I don't disagree with you, but they did give Tommy Stinson a, a, a nice uh, paycheck for a little while after uh, the replacements <laughs> broke up. So, yeah. But, and, but uh, I guess, and now that uh, Axel has kind of chilled out, are, are you cool with the, uh, with the, the resuscitated three fifths band members back? Uh, yeah, 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 for sure. And then uh, he's, he's not who he used to be uh, vocally, but still pretty good. You know, he's uh, still bringing it. I, I've been very impressed he, the few times I've seen him. Sadly, he can't, he can't hit the mellow notes anymore. You know, he can still wail and hit a lot of octaves, but, uh, he struggles with the with the slow stuff as we as we witnessed at a at own John's funeral. And well, what did you think of Velvet Revolver, which was essentially you know going out and uh, two to the the other main guys and then picking up picking up a better singer or, uh, or just a different singer, I should say. Uh, good, good, not as good, but good. I, I like them. You know, uh, I just I don't know. I just feel like uh, when you start hitting the douche button. Uh, you know, no matter how great you are, maybe you should take some time off and really reevaluate. <laughs> I, I would say Axel didn't just hit the button; he wore it out. Oh my god! Like, dude. Look at so that. some might say that a certain member of an awesome '70s into the '80s hit douchey level, known as David Lee Roth, who maybe he needed did. a little bit of a break. He did, but. He did end up getting traded out, so <laughs> I didn't include Dave. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, but we'll, I, we'll, we'll get to a little Van Halen later, maybe with Marty, but definitely with me. But, uh, Jim, over to you. Yeah, I had a feeling Van Halen was going to come up tonight, shockingly. Um, okay, so, so for my list, I went for not just trades, but swaps. Gotcha. Where, 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 one, one, where a band would trade one member, to another band and get their member and their member in return. Jesus, that sounds exponentially <laughs> so, harder. I, I, I'm looking forward to hearing <laughs> yes. this because that, that, that's what I mean. That's what Hot Stove is all about. It's either free agency or acquisitions. Maybe some exactly. players to be named later. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to maybe a little two for one or a three for two swap. But right. So, so these are and see where we are. So, so this isn't necessarily a trade that had to happen. I feel like this was a musician that was that, that definitely fit in, but. I feel like I feel like doing a swap would have been a really fascinating thing in this situation. I would trade uh, the Edge from U2 with uh, David Kennedy, who's the the guitarist, the guitarist for Angels and Airwaves. And the reason I make that trade is because the guitar licks in Angels and Airwaves clearly inspired by U2, a and I think having the Edge on Angels and Airwaves would definitely bring their playing up a notch. Mm -hmm. And David Kennedy has got some amazing talent on his own. He would fit right in with you too. And I think having him do his own thing with them and with carrying that inspiration with him from, from, from the edge would, would be a really interesting thing to see. I think it would, I think it would make, uh, do some really interesting things going with both bands. And maybe Marty would have actually liked you too that way. Maybe. No. <laughs> edge was not the problem. <laughs> I had a feeling. So can't argue with that. And Stay I, I tuned, kids. I, I'm I'm familiar. I'm going to learn something new. And when I make the playlist for this show, I have never heard Angels and Airwaves. So I'm looking forward to, the, to something new. <sighs> poor, poor, uh, poor child. Just well, musically you know, not being given the gifts you you deserve. <laughs> but I'll be able to appreciate it more now. Yeah, Eric doesn't know shit about music. <laughs> I can live with that. Uh, or, you know. Ah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. Um, yeah, one of the kids. But, uh, yeah. But, but speaking of the kids and someone else who likes you too, Christine, we're going to throw this one over to you now. For my number one pick. 
I am going to talk about uh, the band Squeeze, uh, big hits in the 80s. In fact, uh, for a time, Paul Carrick, who actually was kind of a utility man in the 80s and 90s, he was in Mike and the Mechanics, he worked with Paul Young, he did some some solo stuff, but he was with Squeeze for one album in the early 80s, famously sang Tempted, you know, Tempted by the fruit of another, tempted but the truth is discovered. What's been going on now that you have gone? There's no other. I would have loved to have had him be a permanent member of the band, even though I love Different and Tilbrook. I've always been a great Squeeze fan through the years. I even got to see uh, Different and Tilbrook when they went out on their own at the Park West in Chicago, uh, did a tour and I got to see them in the uh, mid nineties. Loved, loved it. Um, like I said, I've always been a fan. But um, Paul Carrick, I mean, they're, they call him the man with the golden voice for good reason. He came in to replace Jules Holland, who had left the band, and uh, would have loved to have seen more from a Squeeze lineup with Paul Carrick in it. So that's my number one pick. Ah, eh, sure. What the heck? Why not? Not a bad choice. What do you guys think? Sure. Why not? I Yeah. I mean, I could live with it. Uh, wouldn't have been on my list, but, but I, I definitely get it. All right. Well, that brings us to me now. And uh, I have no, there's no particular order on this one. This is just uh, three that, that came to mind. I'm, I'm going to start out with Van Halen, but not where you, you think it might go. I have no problem with Sammy Hagar coming in the band. There's the Dave camp. There's the Sammy camp. There are very, very few in the Gary Sharon camp. But I had no problem with Sammy Hagar, uh, where the band went. But this might make someone like Marty and some of the heavier guys who who dug, and, and I'm one of them. I, I really liked the heavy Van Halen, a little poppier with Sammy, no problem. And he still brought a lot of good licks throughout the years, but with more of that, that keyboard pop sensibility. But I, I can't I, wait to hear this. I proffer this. Another guitarist who was on his way up in the early to mid-80s, and a guy with a Led Zeppelin major Led Zeppelin kick to his music and worked with Queens producer Mac on his first two albums. Don't say no. And emotions in motion, Billy Squire coming in. Wow. Wow. I, wow. And I've learned through the years that Sammy Hagar is no slouch on the guitar. Not at all. And, which you never really got to know in Van Halen, unless they were playing live and he would take some of this up while Eddie was doing the keyboard. But, uh, Billy Squire, I've always thought that he would have brought a little bit of a tougher edge to it. Definitely some, still some pop sensibilities, but more. I mean, you just listen to his his licks and the drums from Bobby Choyner. They had that John Bonham thing. And not, not that you know, Alex Van Halen obviously does too. So, I mean, yeah. I, Billy Squire, I, I, I really would have dug it. And we wouldn't have been spared that Rocky, Rocky Tonight video. I always <laughs> it. Rock me, Rocky, it's Rock Me Tonight. Uh, and the Signs of Life album came out in 1984, so that overlap from Van Halen's 1984. And but let's face it, everyone says that Rock Me Tonight killed Billy Squire's career. Maybe, maybe not. But I will say this: in 1986, in the Live Without a Net video, Eddie Van Halen was wearing the same, uh, you know, uh, neon the the pastel. He was wearing those pastel jammy bottoms, just the same way that Billy Squire did. In the Rocking Tonight video. Yep, yep. So, uh, Mr. Van Halen, what what do you think? What, what what's your thoughts on, I, on Billy Squire? Perhaps I, I'm a I'm a big Billy Squire fan. Uh, maybe um, at the time, anyway, uh, probably would have said I was a, as close to a Billy Squire fan as a Sammy Hagar fan. And you're right; uh, they got a little more poppy, not a lot, but they got a little more poppy with with Sammy and. I, I kind of like that idea. And a guy who's, uh, you know, he's just recently crested. He's maybe could use the pop in his career. I, I like it. I like it. And it could have rescued him from Rock Me Tonight, uh, where he was banned from that <laughs> <Yes>. one. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you really hated that, man. No, no I, no, I like that. <laughs> but I'm not one of those people. I don't believe that it wrecked his career. I, I think, well, it obviously played a part in it, but. 
I like the song. I and, and the, what was it? Yeah, there were. He had one or two albums after uh, Signs of Life. Uh, Hear me now or Hear you now. Uh, decent. Album. There were just a couple of good songs, the, the singles from those albums. But Don't Say No, Emotions in Motion. I love those. Both those albums to this day. Yeah, I, I will not too. skip a track on either of those. And I, I, again, the trajectory that he and Sammy, Sammy, have, of course, had a longer history of success with Montrose than a solo career and HSAS in 84. But Squire, I always think that would have been a good call for him anyway. Yeah, that, that's, that's a real good fit. I like that. All right. It's all, always nice when the Van Halen brothers are simpatico on that one. That, 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 that makes me feel good. The rare occasion it happens. The, the rare occasion where we're not talking about jump. So, uh, <laughs> drum fills or not. So, but Marty, back to you. Uh, righty. Uh, so, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, one that I know we said death doesn't. You know, we really want to get to the. You know, but, I, I I rescind that. Wherever you want to go with it. But uh, you know, because that's a whole that's for a, a show of another flavor. But this one, in this case, I couldn't help it. Uh, I would love it. If when Chester Bennington died, Aaron Lewis slid right in there and just kept ripping it up. I, he's an excellent songwriter, fantastic guitar player. Of, uh, I don't know how he sings so amazingly while smoking filterless cigarettes, but <laughs> holy crap, the guy can wail. Very underrated singer, super underrated. Uh, I think that would have been a super good fit. They were, I know they were bros and all that. Uh, I think that would be just so much fun to see what they could do together, you know, then, uh, you know, add a little guitar action to it too, uh, that Chester didn't really bring. So that uh, would be fun in my eyes. I also like Chester when he took over after, uh, Scott Weiland died and his brief, mm. had a brief tenure with a STP. Yeah. Yeah. That would have worked really well, actually. Although yeah. I like the singer that's currently with STP, but he does both, both those singers justice. But again, the show for another time. But I like that. Aaron Lewis. Yep. Nice. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Aaron Lewis. Um, I, I like Stained. Uh, I do. I think they're a good band and everything. But I, I'm just a big fan of Aaron Lewis. Everything, everything that he's doing, the music he's writing now. Um, I like the way he does his solo concerts where he can just yell shit at him. And he's like, even your fox. Yeah, he's like, fuck Cindy Lauper, let's do this. What the fuck? What chords are these? And then he just rips, and it's amazing. And, you know, I like that kind of sort of whimsical, what the hell type, you know, mentality. No, there's only 20,000 of you here. Let's just wing it. I like that. <laughs> and if you're talented enough, you can pull it off. Nice. He does. All right. Another great call from Mr. Zamora. <laughs> then, Mr. Culver, up to you. All right, so for my last uh, my last pick, I did uh, lead guitars. So now I'm going to talk about an instrument that actually matters. I'm going to go with drummers. Uh, so my my pick, <laughs> my J K. My pick is to trade uh, Lars Ulrich with with Animal of the Electric Mayhem. Ah, <laughs> yeah, because. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Lars is kind of a Muppet anyway, and uh, well, is, you know, is, he, is he tall enough to be a Muppet? Oh, I think he I think animals. Be. Yeah, I think animals a little about an inch taller. I might be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, maybe maybe being with the Muppets for a while, my, while might lighten him up, and uh, you know, finally put a stake through the heart of that that giant ego that balloons every time he, he walks around and does anything, um, <laughs> and. Uh, it would be it would be fun to, to see him cover in some of their stuff, and uh, probably couldn't complain about any copyright issues with the music that they make. Uh, and Animal is just you know amazingly fun. talented, fun. I think he's one of the few drummers that could keep up with the rest of Metallica. Honestly, uh, you know, if just when he's just having a seizure in every limb, you know, but it but it works. So, you know, he's got that energy going, and uh, I think he would fit in really well with Metallica. I think it would work, it would be a really good fit uh, on both sides. So, a nice yin and yang to the chilled out Robert Trujillo and his, his fellow rhythm section guy. I like it exactly. Oh, yeah, they so. could vibe together for sure. 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, Animals held his own with Dave Grohl, another, another drummer of, of, of some wrestling. Indeed, that would be, and that would be another trade that that I could see making. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my original pick. I think I like it. It's good. Animal, welcome on board to Metallica. All right, Christine, what do you got for us on the on your next one? For my number two pick, I actually have a guest answerer on this one because we talked about it, and she is a huge fan of this band. So I'm gonna let her take it away, Anya. Thank you, Christine. My name is Anya, and I am one of Christine's best buddies. And my favorite band is Prince and the Revolution. And I have to say that after Prince disbanded the, the band and everybody kind of went their own separate ways, um, it never had, yes, it was wonderful. I loved all of the wonderful um, collabs that he did with other artists. Um, and it gave his music so much voice in other ways, but it never seemed to have that same pop as the controversy 1999 albums. Um, uh, you know, Purple Rain never came close to those albums. So I feel that I think that maybe he should have stayed in the band, but still did his own collabs on the side. Thank you. Eh. What? You are out of your mind. Huh. I, I don't know if I can go on with this show. I don't know if I can do it. Just slam something. It's okay. slam something. Take it Walk easy. Away. Slam something. Man. All right. Fine. Alcohol to the rescue. <laughs> oh, Christine, Whatever. Great That's all one. I got to say. Whatever. All right. Well, <laughs> I will let those two fight another time when they're back on the same stage, same screen. And uh, for my next one, I'm going to go with, speaking of, Dave Grohl and uh, the Foo Fighters. I want to, uh, you know, uh, take out a guy who we who was brought up on the drummer countdown show, Josh Freeze, who is an amazing drummer. The guy, the guy can fit in any band. We 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 talked about his resume, all the people he's played with. Phenomenal drummer. However, after seeing Taylor Hawkins' son Shane sit in on My Hero in the tribute shows that they did yes. for his dad. I think you got to give it to him. He's already playing in another band, I know, and and I don't, you know, he was 16 when those tribute thing, uh, the, the concerts were happening. But you know who uh, wound up playing with his dad's band as well when he was 16 years old, joining full time? Wolfgang Van Halen joining VH. So, yep. H Mage, I think it could have happened. I, I, it still can happen. Of course it can, yes. And it should. It should. It's just right. It's the right thing. I mean, what, would it be too much emotionally for the other guys in the band? Maybe, At maybe first. not. I, I think that once you get over the initial shock of it, I think it could be more cathartic than anything. Yeah, that's that's a cool one. I like it. And an, another one, uh, Dax Nielsen has been drumming with Cheap Trick for a while, playing with his dad, Rick Nielsen, on guitar. And another family member, uh, let's see, Robin Taylor Zander, Robin Zander's, uh, the singer from Cheap Trick Son, has uh, been filling in on bass for Tom Peterson when Tom Peterson has needed some medical breaks. So it's all, all these family affairs with the younger generation. It could definitely happen. Uh, Jim, did you catch yes. what Eric just did there twice? He put the emphasis on cheap. Cheap <laughs> trick. Not cheap trick. Cheap trick. Well, cheap the fact that it's cheap, do that. the fact that it's cheap is more important than the fact that it's a trick. Am I right? Maybe so. I've never heard someone do that. That's cheap trick. See, it must be an East Coast thing. Yeah. Wow. Right, well, and considering they are a Midwest band, I think that you know who's to say who's right. All I know is I first heard them when I was down at the creek, not the crick. So there we go. It's cheap trick or cheap trick. Cheap trick at the crick. There you go. See, there it has. There we have it. We have a winner. Marty, <laughs> Marty, you're a winner. Over to you now. All right. For my number one, and uh, there was a, a thousand Dave Grohl honorable mentions. I could have thrown him pretty much anywhere. Love the guy. Um, both as a drummer and a, and a front man. Uh, but I just, uh, anybody can do that. So 
I'm going to ruffle some feathers and you're not going to believe how much I don't care. Yes, you guessed it, Eric. Bono is out. Beat it. <laughs> you blow hard, douche bag, amazing band ruining dickwad. Do we have to censor that? Anyway. Who, who's, who are you bringing in? Can't stand the guy. I, I And it's not even his style of singing. It's fine. I just... I can't stand to look at him. I can't stand. Anyway, an otherwise great band hindered by this guy. It would be so simply easy and it would add a bit of a edge to a more poppy band, which no pun intended there. Eddie Vedder, Eddie Vedder. Ooh. I'm a big fan of Eddie Vedder. I know some people aren't, but I am. He's a good enough singer to pull off all the Bono stuff and he would bring like a just the, in the same way in Selmo would bring a little bit of a edgier thing edge uh, a little edgier Do thing to too a little, little more uh, dark yeah dark we'll go with dark uh, I, I think it could have been great and uh, he's been known to write a tune or two so uh, I'm a Vetter fan I know a lot of people are not but I don't know why but uh, I, I've always liked the stage presence. I mean, what he does off camera, I could, you know, the more of the. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we know. I mean, we hey, know that, you could but... put De Niro in there over Bono, as far as I'm concerned. So wow. there you go. <laughs> these are bold statements. And I, I, I would see, I wish Christine was here for these moments of contention. I do. So but... do I. So do I. I but, I'm uh... trying to picture Eddie Vedder mumbling his way through Pride in the Name of Love and. Um... Just not feeling that vibe. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not getting a. I'm okay. not getting a really strong, Picture prideful this. feeling off of that. Picture this: the lights are lower. <laughs> There's a little bit of uh, you know, little fog around the floor. Roadies, make sure we got the fog machines going. Picture it right now. A light reveals Eddie Vedder facing away from the crowd because you know that's what he <laughs> that's does. That's Eddie. <laughs> yep. No, I get it. There's some problems, but uh, <laughs> well, I, 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 let me let me help you solve them, Marty, by bringing up uh, our our band again, Van Halen. Sammy Hagar, for years, did not. So there's how many of those back catalog Dave songs he didn't sing? I think, off the top of my head, I think they, he only did "Ain't Talk About Love," "Panama," and "Jump." Initially, had somebody else from the crowd sing, and yeah. uh, "Unchained." They eventually did, and. Uh, Michael Anthony was singing "Somebody Get Me a Doctor," so he doesn't need to sing all the old backlog of YouTube. Yeah, that's true. Just uh, a select few, you know, a select few that. Uh, I, I can hear him tearing up "Sunday Bloody Sunday." There you go. You see, and that song could use a little bit of dark undertones that Eddie might bring. But Bono did write these things, so it's like the the, the time continuum. Do those songs still exist when the new guy comes in? Oh no, he can. He can sit in the back and not be famous and write songs. As long as I don't have to hear him congratulate himself on being the master of the universe once again because of all the money he gave to charity, all the shit he produced, all the, hey, let's do a compilation album for the fill-in-the-blank person who needs, and then parade himself around like a peacock because he's amazing. I can't take it. I can't take it. So you prefer someone to shut up and sing? I'm not sure if uh, Eddie Vedder is a shut up and sing type either. No, 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 no. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't care about any of that. I just, I, just <laughs> you just want him out. I get it. I get it. It's just too much. <laughs> he does all these great things for charity and then ruins it by talking about it all the time. Well, how can you how can you know you're a good person unless you tell everybody you're better than them? I mean, it's it's an important part of it. It is. It is. And you know, I'm, ask any I'm, famous person; they'll explain it to you. Oh, <laughs> ask any narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, Jim, play the blues. Over to All you. All right. All right. So, for my third pick, this is purely for the entertainment value. Has absolutely nothing to do with making bands better. Um, it's just just for kicks and giggles. Uh, I'm going to trade Bob Dylan to Queen. 
<laughs> I like it. <laughs> because number one, Freddie Mercury's voice, if he switched over, would his that epic voice would make Bob Dylan's uh, uh, folk songs absolutely amazing, and make me actually want to listen to them. And and there there would actually be a reason for them to be seven minutes long, because he because because of that because of his voice stretching them out. So number one, he would make Bob Dylan's music a thousand times better, and I I just I just want to want to picture uh, Bob Dylan singing, uh, "We will, we will rock you." Man, there's so many. So many that could. Oh my God, that's awesome! And damn it, we man! AI, I, so I want to hear people. Dylan singing. I'm sorry, I want to hear Freddie Mercury singing "Shelter from the Storm" now. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, he would kill that song. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Absolutely, kill it. Or "Desolation Row." Oh my God, yes. Under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Ooh, Bob, oh, hey. is Radio Gaga. <laughs> we we could go on like this for many many seconds, folks. I can go. Indeed, on we could. <laughs> but for now, we're gonna kick it over to Miss Christine for horror. We're gonna kick it over to Christine for her next pick, if I can do it correctly. Christine, over to you. Okay, so for my number three, and first before I get to it, of course, I'm here in. Eric's famous backdrop for my picks today. Uh, sorry, I can't be there with you guys, but my number three pick is Tears for Fears. Uh, Kurt and Roland famously had a lot of um, animosity between them on and off. Um, every picture that you see of them, it always looks like they're a couple that just had a fight and aren't talking to each other. Take a look, you'll see what I'm talking about. So anyhow, when he left, when uh, Kurt left in the early 90s, what if they had instead replaced him with Howard Jones? Okay, I say this um, because although Raul in the Kings of Spain is one of my favorite albums, um, Roland did it still under the moniker Tears for Fears, but did it with himself. <laughs> um, love that album. Check it out if you haven't heard it. But uh, yeah, I think that Howard Jones would have been a really interesting um, combination for him to work with. So that's my number three pick. Her best one yet, wouldn't you say? Wow. Well done. Hundred percent. Awesome, Christine. I agree well, wholeheartedly. And she did, and she did, and she left you alone on the whole Bono thing. That was very nice for her. I thought. <laughs> if she had heard for her now, would have been. For now, exactly. On to my final pick, my third pick, however you want to look at it. The, uh, there is no bronze. There is no silver. There is no gold tonight. Just three three fun sanity picks tonight. And this one, uh, it was, um, there is technically a death which left the vacancy in this one. But I'm going to be saying with In Excess that uh, we, we, we still have to uh, have that unfortunate In Excess rock star show for better and worse. At least it gave the band some exposure. But uh, J.D. Fortune, you're out. And Don't Terrence Trent Darby slash Sananda Maitreya. Maitreya. Honestly, I don't know how he pronounces his last name now. His uh, Sen Sen Senandaya Maitreya. To me, he's always going to be Terrence Trent Darby. I would have him be the singer for In Excess. Terrence Trent Darby. Which is actually something which happened. He was the first person to sing with NXS after Hutchins died in 97. In 1999, as a prelude to the uh, Sydney Games in 2000, I think it was. These Olympic years, they get uh, they started having them every two years. But I still think Sydney, correct me if I'm wrong here, was in 2000, the Sydney Olympics, Summer Olympics. I think so. But in 1999, there's a big concert at the Australia, Australia Arena, Australia Stadium in Sydney. And... Uh, Terrence Trent Darby, I think he was still TTD at the time, but he came out and he sang uh, Kick, What You Need, New Sensation, and Never Tear Us Apart. And wow, brought his own little wow, thing really? to it. And I, I cannot recommend checking that out enough on on, um, on YouTube, get the full set that he did with them. 
And Michael Hutchins always had that, you know, that, that, that blue eyed soul. Just He had so much soul in his voice for a white boy. Hey, that no brother. That's a white boy. And he and Terrence Trent Darby would have brought all that and just that soul in his voice. And I, I think that would have resuscitated his career would have uh, allowed in excess to, to continue a little bit longer in a more respectable manner. Again, J the JD fortune switch album, eh, you know, had some decent stuff on it, but that whole gimmick never sat well with me. But uh, again, it allowed in excess the band members to be known for their talent I and mean, being removed from the shadow of I mean, Michael Hutchins, one of the greatest lead men of all time. But Terrence Trent yeah, Darby, what well, would, would have been, would they still be around? I don't know. But I, I think that Terrence Trent Darby or Sendaya, Sin, Sendaya Maitreya, it, it, as, an, in a, as a super NXS fan, I, it would have been awesome. And actually, in uh, researching this, uh, I learned uh, Kirk Pengilly, the uh, guitarist slash uh, saxophone player, had mentioned how well it worked with Darby. But at the time, the 99, 2000, his record company wouldn't allow him to join in excess. Maybe if he would have allowed for one more album and a greatest hits the way that Sammy Hagar did with Captain Records when he joined Van Halen, could have happened. But flash forward to 2004, 2005, I think it was, when the NXS Rockstar show was on, the uh, reality show. By that yeah. point, maybe Terrence Trent Darby could have had the record company stuff worked out and they'd still be around here, what, you know, almost 20 years later now. But that that is my final pick with, in uh, doing some free agency I like it. here. I'm going Terrence Trent Darby, filling in for the late, great, never to be forgotten Michael Hutchins. Nice. I uh, I was pick. a little afraid you were going to go Bono there. No. Oh, as great a friend as they were, Bono and, and, and Hutch, but no. Bono had a nice song uh, that he sang on uh, Michael Hutchins' uh, Poshma solo album, but no, don't want him fronting in excess. No. No. You and me both. So now, are. folks, this brings us, we are done with our three for. We are now on to our plus one, which is, for lack of better uh, explanation, a disappointing band member <sighs> departure. And Marty, I go to you. All right, all right. Uh, this one might surprise some, but uh, I was a big fan of the band. Uh, their their debut album was really good. Their follow up was good too. Uh, but when she left, she left a huge gaping hole, and uh, it was temporary. You know, they they say temporary in case it doesn't work out. Right. Uh, Makeup but it did work out, and she became a huge pop star. Um, no doubt. The departure uh -huh. of Gwen Stefani, there was no coming back yes. from that. And she tried to be loyal. She tried, you know, she tried to hang with them and tried to, like, hey, yeah, we're going to do more No Doubt music. And they did a little. But it was, you know, it was just never the same. And uh, the the pop world you know, drew her in and, you know, a hundred million dollars or whatever will do that. Um, but they were a really good tight band, uh, really fun. Yep. Just always, uh, their music was upbeat and, uh, I uh, just, I, I dug them. I, I, you know, I first discovered them because wow, who's this hot chick? And then the band was awesome, but whatever you discover what you discover. Um, that MTV thing, uh, the spring break thing where they, uh, they played uh, just a girl, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, yeah. And the uh, the drummer jumped in the pool. Yeah. So uh, I, it was just a lot of fun, and the music was really great. And so then I started listening to the rest of their music, and just really, really liked them. I'm always been a reggae fan, and that whole ska thing was was very cool. Yeah. You know, the specials, and you get the point. Good stuff. Nice call. I like this one. Like it a lot. Yep. Yeah, her her solo work was I mean it's hugely successful but I don't think any anywhere on the level of of what no doubt could accomplish as a band. I I absolutely love their stuff. Yeah. It was a shame. Yep. And I never right. saw them live. You never saw them live. You, you, you lived in Southern California in the 90s. Um, I know. I know. Uh, well, you're you're coming out of that phase in your life where you know. Yeah. Uh, well. Yeah, I was fresh. Yeah. I was fresh. Uh, freshly divorced, and 
you know, starting to discover fun again. And uh, it was one of the first things on the horizon. But, yeah, I never got to see him for some odd reason. Don't know why. Well, you could have seen him open for you, too. So Mar- Mar- Marty is punching me right now. Uh, but, uh... <laughs> you know, that's not a bad idea because – I can spend a thousand dollars on a ticket, but then I can get out of the parking lot more easily. There you go. See, I, I, <laughs> I inadvertently try to help, folks. Inadvertent helper. That's me. All right, Jim. Now to you. Okay, so my pick is someone I'm someone I'm actually not that big of a fan of, but his departure from from his band was such a had such a seismic impact on the music business that I feel compelled to pick him. I feel like there's no one else I could pick for this because that's how important it is. And that is John Lennon. And in fact, I feel so strongly about this that if, if you, if, if I had a time machine and one chance to use it, I would go back in time and stop John Lennon from meeting Yoko. (laughs) <laughs> well, I, mean, I, get, I get the joke <laughs> later exactly that's because, a good yeah. joke that's a good joke i mean i mean you know the beatles you you know can't overstate how how amazing a band they were how how iconic how impactful and I, just can how, we all agree like overall greatest band ever like greatest band ever. maybe not my Absolutely. favorite but overall and, and they're they, not my favorite like, uh, on the music hard yeah. to argue against them. no argument for me yeah, not you know, not my favorite before my time, but absolutely greatest greatest rock band ever, and he, he obviously God usually damn it, Yoko. Cool. <laughs> yeah, he never leaves. The Beatles stay together for at least another decade, make make more amazing music, and we don't get some of the worst music ever made, like Imagine, and Ooh. and and that Stop. that Stop. and that. <laughs> And that horrible Christmas song that makes me want to burn my Christmas tree down, oh my and God. so many other horrible things that that made the '70s, you know, so, uh, not as awesome as it should have been, in my opinion. Uh, and just the, the the difference it would have made if he'd stuck with with the Beatles would have been absolutely incredible, and uh, and would have saved us all a lot of a lot of heartache. And he probably would have wouldn't would have uh, lived a lot longer too. But that's a whole other story so uh, yeah, i mean that you know <laughs> it's just a chain of events but you know yeah butterfly effect you know who knows what would have, it would have been different Things exactly would have been different exactly right. so you know less said about about the ideology he pursued with yoko the better but uh you know yeah. I'm, I'm 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 just speaking purely musically here the the music yeah. world would have been much much richer had he stuck with them and yeah, that's a, a what if worthy of, of uh, the the dark what if Dark Phoenix had not been killed? Marvel issue many moons ago. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Okay, you got Christine, it. over to you. Okay, so bands that never recovered when someone left, or what departure really, really hurt your heart? I have to say that um, you know before I get to my one that really is going to be my pick for this. I'm going to talk about uh, uh, Depeche Mode when Angie, Andy Fletcher died. Um, they just never were the same. Um, when um, Ian Curtis died from Joy Division, of course, I love what came after it, New Order. Um, you know, they never were the same. When Lane Staley died from uh, um, Alice in Chains, they never recovered, in my opinion. Um, but let's talk about Barry Buck, Mills, and Stipe. Um, REM was my favorite, favorite band about till the mid 80s and through into the 90s, the mid 90s, late 90s. And uh, I would say that when um, Bill Berry and Peter Buck sequentially left the band, um, they never recovered. They were never the same, even though they didn't replace them. I don't even know who could have possibly replaced them because they had such magic together. But um, yeah, that's my pick, REM. Never recovered. Oh, I forgot Michael Stipe. Yeah, or not Michael Stipe. Uh, Michael Hutchins from In Excess. Yeah, that's another uh, one that I forgot to mention. But I know somebody else is going to mention it. So I'll let them handle that. All right. All right. Just kidding. I love that pick. Good one. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I reserve judgment. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Well, to, cl to close out the plus one, I, I'm I want to very quickly throw a couple of honorable mentions in to Lindsey Buckingham mm. getting kicked out of or quit or whatever you want, and now it's not going to happen again with Christian McVie no longer with us. But a hole so big with Lindsey departing, it took two guys to come in. Yeah. Two great guys in uh, you know Finn and uh, and Mike Campbell, but still, that's an honorable yeah. mention. Another honorable mention going out to Jason Isbell, departing the Drive-By Truckers, who were on a run of three amazing albums with Jason Isbell. And, of course, you've got two great songwriters with Patterson Hood and Mike Cooley. And Isbell, a third guitar, a third amazing songwriter. And he just got too big for it. And, you know, if you watch the documentary about him, uh, there, there were also a lot of substance things going on that led to his departure. But uh, he's gone on to a pretty all right career. But drive by truckers to me have not been the same since he left. But that is not as impactful to me as Andy Taylor leaving for a long, long time in Duran Duran. Had a nice comeback album in the early 2000s, brought back that, you know, a uh, good, his, his funk guitar, his picking style is just so unique. You listen to those early Duran Duran albums and it, it's like almost, it's, and then the power station, it's got a funk to it and a real funk keyboard and it, it, it's a funkier roxy music i mean duran duran was, was a, a, a nice natural extension from bowie and uh and roxy music and i think and what made them unique was that that guitar guitar work and uh, just his style I, I still like duran duran but they're just nick rose's keyboards dominate way too much now and you're just I mean, uh, Mark Ronson has come in and play, done some guitar work with them, which he has a nice funk to his style. I wish they'd oh, make sure. permanent guitars. Aaron Duran Duran has not been the same since he, he left and left a huge void before the comeback album with, with Astronaut in the early 2000s. Do you have a favorite riff or lick? Whew, God, Hold Back the Rain. That's just a good spotlight for him and John Taylor on the bass both. Uh God, there's there's a crack. I'm looking for cracks in the pavement. Uh, girls on film. There, there's a, a just, and and the the I was glad he got to a spotlight more of that with, with the power station project, and just get get a little bit funkier. Working with Tony Thompson on the drums, but and yeah, and and such a great soul singer with with Robert Palmer. I I, I love love that first power station album. Absolutely good pick. Good pick. I'm Not one you... Genesis mention. Yeah, I think they did all right with both singers for, for, for what so. they, they they both did. And although Phil yeah. wasn't able to you know be as active as he was on their final tour, and I'm glad that he uh, got to go out one more time with them. So, what a nice honorable mention there. Yeah. Or accidental mention? Accidental yeah. honorable mention? Passing passing mention? Observance. Yeah observance i like that that works and as always i i i i like the fact that uh, we were able to get together for another three for even though we had we got we got to piece some stuff together the magic the magic of editing once again so uh yeah and folks uh forgot to mention at the start of the show but uh thank you everybody for listening we, we are continuing to grow more and more subscribers this week more likes more shares Thanks for doing that, but don't, don't forget, subscribe, like, share. And, you know, we're, we're, we're coming back at you every week here on, on All Over the Place, and we really appreciate and we thank you for your support. You're here. And that's it for this one, this round, folks. Three for number 27, now in the can, the music-minded hot stove. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Marty, Jim, thanks for being here. Christine, thanks for being here. And uh, anyone want to do Christine's uh, send-off? I'll do it. Bye-bye. All over the place where the fun sanity never ends. Whatever you do, stop having so much fun. Nope.